general, um, the proper mindset to have in terms of your outlook um, when you trade. And then we're going to have a Q&A session at the end um, to wrap everything up. And that's where you can ask me anything, um, not regarding uh, this lecture or just any questions you have in general about this. All right. So we're going to get started here uh, with the first um, slide here. So the facts. Um, you may seem it be, uh, you may, this may appear to be beginner stuff, but I promise you we're going to get into some of the more advanced um, stuff, not just you hear from the gurus or anything like that. Um, I'm going to make sure that you learn stuff that you can't find on YouTube just because you have a lot of uh, gurus out there who are just telling you a lot of, you know, fake information, not really good stuff. So I'm here to kind of um, explain the really deep truth about trading. Um, so just to start off, facts, obviously, you're going to fail in the beginning. Um, I am still failing. Every trader out there is still failing. Um, there is sort of not really any sort of, uh, there's not really any, any way around it. Um, so pretty much what that is is you are going to fail. You are going to place a lot of losing trades. Uh, you may not become profitable until a couple years into your uh, into your journey. It's not easy. A lot of people just immediately hop in and just assume that they're going to make money right off the bat. I will tell you a little story. Um, one of the first trades I ever placed, um, it was amazing. I just you know went in with a thousand dollars and I said this is great. So I popped it into a penny stock. I made you know eight hundred bucks within five minutes and it was insane and I thought oh my god I'm the best trader in the world this is too easy why <laughs> why isn't everyone else doing this well it wasn't until the next week where I found out why and I ended up losing all that and more I blew up my first account lost a couple thousand on that and uh, I'm here to tell you that it's okay to blow accounts I'm not telling I'm not here to tell you that you will blow accounts but uh, I'm here to tell you that it is possible, it is likely. I know tons and tons of traders who have blown accounts, meaning that they have sort of uh, lost a lot of money on their first account, and that is all normal. Um, it is important to sort of learn from that. Um, if, you do, if you just blow an account and you just YOLO everything, well, that is not how you're going to succeed. I promise you, one of the only, you know, one of the most important ways to succeed as a trader is to learn from those blown accounts and don't do it again. Um, I know a couple traders who um, can easily place on, you know, $100,000 losses and shake it off as if it's, you know, they just, you know, stepped on a piece of gum or something and it's no big deal. And I'm just sitting there like, hot, like what? Like that would be the end of me. I, you know, if that was me, I'd be like, no way. But it's because they've become so successful and so profitable where they can easily shrug off those uh, losses. I know, um, I know a couple other traders um, who don't have a lot of money and they've blown accounts a couple thousand dollars, a couple hundred dollars, tens of thousand dollars, you know, you name it, you name the money, it's been blown by someone. Um, and I'm here to tell you again, it is okay to blow accounts as long as you learn the lesson. Um, once you start blowing like four to five accounts, well then maybe there's a problem and you need to get, um, you know, have one of the <laughs> admins or moderators um, help you with that. There's really no reason to blow more than one to three accounts, I would say. Um, definitely when you're first starting out, only trade with you know a reasonable uh, amount of money that you can lose. Um, for example, when I start, first started trading futures, I only put in a thousand to two thousand dollars trading with one contract um, because I went in with the mindset that I would lose it all, uh, um, and sort of that's just the price of tuition that you pay. You kind of pay to uh, blow accounts and learn yourself. Uh, my thoughts on paper trading: uh, super, super helpful um, to learn the concepts and really learn your platform and learn the strategy and concept. Um, a lot of people I see just get right into um, actual trading, trading their live accounts, and I did that too. And it was a huge mistake because uh, you have the opportunity to lose a lot of money. Um, most of the time, you are going to lose the money, especially when you're first starting out. You may hit, you may get lucky, and you may hit the jackpot a couple times. But I'm here to tell you that that's most likely just luck, and you're probably better off playing the lottery or go, going to a casino. Um, but that is part of the journey. Um, so. Yep, that's that one. Um, I'm sure you come across a ton of YouTube videos or YouTubers, books, you know, websites, you name it. 90 to 95% fail. What, Lana? I hate whenever I hear this quote or whenever someone says this. Well, yes, it may be true, and this may be um, a somewhat accurate representation. 
I don't really believe in it because I believe that, you know, anyone can become successful and really what is success? It's kind of defining your own success and defining what kind of expectations or what kind of goals you want to get out of trading. I know some of you might want to get that dream car, the dream house or the dream, you know, vacation home, you know, you name it. For others, you may just want to uh, just, you know, make a hundred bucks a week or something like that. So we're going to get into that a little bit later. But whenever I hear this, I don't really agree with because people have their own definition of success. And, you know, when people fail, well, what is failing? You know, do you just give up and quit completely? Do you blow accounts? So it's really up to interpretation. Um, in my eyes about this, I really believe that you only fail the day you stop and the day you give up. And I don't really look at, you know, I, and even that I don't look at as a failure because you are trying and you are, um, you know, you gave it a shot. And if, if it's down to your circumstances, there really is no reason to sort of, um, lose and blow multiple accounts and sort of take you out of trading. The idea here is you should have money set aside for your trading career or investing career so that way you can handle or withhold um, several blown accounts at most. You know, the idea here is not to blow more than one to two accounts, um, you know, three maximum. So that way you need to structure it based on your own budget, how to sort of plan for that. And I'm not, again, I'm not, I want to stress that I'm not saying you are going to blow accounts. I'm just saying it is common. Um, so just be mentally prepared for that. And I still, you know, everyone is, ne no one's ever mentally prepared to lose money, right? It's, it's a tough thing to do, but that's why it's, it's important to set a certain amount of money aside. Um, you know, even if it's like a hundred dollars, you know, that's why it's, it's, you can make a money off money off a hundred dollars and turn it into a thousand. You know, there I've, I've done it. There's people that out there who have done it. Um, we are going to be running a challenge for options just because, uh, I love options. I'm the options guy here. Um, and uh, the penny guys can do deal with the pennies, but it is, you know, no matter what avenue you choose, it is possible to make money off $100. Um, I am telling you, please, please, please do not dump your entire bank account into the first account you make. Um, and even, you know, obviously for those current traders out there right now, I'm here to tell you that, uh, you know, just manage it well. If you're thinking, oh my goodness, I'm putting it, I have so like almost all of my money into my account, um, then that's, you know, a slight problem. And maybe you take some out and maybe you just have a thousand dollars because you no, know, I can promise you if you can make money with a hundred dollars, you can make money with a thousand dollars. Um, and then you're just adding on to that, the cold, hard truth, day trading and investing can make you rich. Um, it can, a lot of people just assume, oh no, it's gambling again, which we'll get into the myths and stuff like that later, but it is there, it, it, there is room to make to, for day trading and investing to make you rich. You just have to be smart about it. Um, one of the best ways to, uh, make money long term is just set a portfolio aside and uh, you literally make money while you sleep and it's the best feeling ever because you don't do anything as long as you're investing um, and day trading if you're consistently profitable you are obviously making money now how to get there well you can't do that without setting realistic expectations and realities um, and one of the most one of the biggest misconceptions um, among day traders is patience and time and what I mean by this is a lot of people just assume that they are going to make money after the first day. You know, I did. I made a couple hundred bucks. I bought myself a new monitor and I was like, this is the easiest job in the world. And well, you know, reality set in and that was not the case. Um, so once you sort of come to terms with that day trading is not easy and it requires time and it requires patience, uh, that is when you start becoming a successful trader. When you switch switch the flip in your mind and tell, tell yourself that, okay, it will take a year or two, three years, you know, however long it may take you, it may take you a day, you know, or like a year, who knows? I can't tell you. It depends on how much effort and time you put into studying, coming to these lectures, anything you name. Um, I can tell you me personally, I'm still not where I want to be. And I don't think I ever will want it, uh, will be, but that is where I'm at. Um, so it requires patience. Um, how long until profitable trader? I kind of touched on that. It really depends. And once you get there, you get there. You kind of don't really lose the schools, the skills. You just have to adapt to the market and uh, you can get there. Um, and once you get there, you will stay there and you will continue to make profits. And it is, again, it is one of the best feelings in the world. Um, so you just have to set your mind to patience. Um, if you lose a day, like say you lose $100 today, all right, and that's like half your account, for example. Um, the idea is, well, you shouldn't be doing that anyway, but just as an example, um, there's always tomorrow. You want to learn from that. 
And you have to say to yourself, I'm not in it for the weekly investment. I'm in it for the long term. I'm in it for the lifetime goal of this is what's going to set me free. This is what's going to help me quit my job or, you know, whatever your goal may be. Um, if you keep working and keep trying, I promise you, you will get there with the right guidance, with the right time, effort, you know, you name it. Um, this will not come with just blindly yellowing calls and stuff like that. This is a um, sort of passion that requires patience and effort. Um, without either of those, you know, you're going to have a very hard time succeeding. But I can promise you, if you do have those, it will be a very, very, very rewarding experience for you, um, especially when it comes to money, right? All right, next one. The common incorrect questions that a bunch of the moderators and admins and um, that the kinds of questions that we get in our DMs all day. So I'm here to answer that for you. Uh, the common incorrect questions. What do I mean by this? Well, can you really ask a wrong question? Well, no. But what I mean by this is you need to start asking yourself the proper questions. And some of the questions I get are, why am I not making money? You know, X amount of money a day. Why am, you know, someone came up to me and said, or texted me and said, why am I not making $100 a day? Like that was my goal. And sure, um, that could be a good goal. Um, but is it a realistic goal? If you're a new trader, that is not a realistic goal. Um, and, you know, I'll get touch on that in a little bit as well. Um, the next one we have is what's the best strategy? Um, well, I can tell you that there really is no best strategy, right? Um, there's a strategy for everyone. There's, it depends on your personality. I know someone who can't sit at a screen all day um, and they scout for the first hour of the day. You know, I know people who are more patient and like to um, be more careful and sort of don't really want to live on the edge and scalp the first 30 minutes in the market and stare at the screen all day, which is totally fine. I do a little bit of both myself. Um, so you really have to come to terms with yourself and figure out what that really means for you. What is the best strategy for me? Not what he's doing or not what, you know, you and your grandmas are doing, but what am I doing, right? What's best for me? For me, I've found the most success with supply and demand um, and using just price, and, price, uh, price action and volume as my indicators. Um, and that's sort of best for me. I know some, uh, another moderator here um, likes to uh, use trend lines or, or um, the EMAs or the SMAs, you know, you name it. If that works for you, that don't change it. You don't have to adapt to every strategy you see. And that is the most important part about this. Um, the expectation reality portion of this is if you stick to a strategy, I can tell you, you have a very good expectation or in reality will set in for you that it will become your strategy the longer you spend time on that strategy, the, the easier it will become to perfect that strategy. If you keep on bouncing around uh, strategies, you will not really become successful. And maybe that's part of the reason why you are not uh, having sort of reality come hit you with a bat. And what I mean by that is if you keep jumping around strategies, you know, it's very hard to become profitable. You need to pick a strategy that you like that has been proven to give good results. Um, for example, it's the I'm going to use my strategy that I use, which is supply and demand. It is a strategy that has been used by many, 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 many investors, traders, Wall Street people. I mean, you name it. It's literally how the market works. Um, so, and that is a strategy where, yeah, you know, no, not every strategy is going to work 100% of the time. It's it's impossible. Do not believe anything you say, or I mean, sorry, anything you hear on the internet. Um, if you see videos. Uh, that say 100% win rate, 90% win rate, it's not going to happen. I'm sorry. Even 80% is a little bit on the edge. That's some real expert stuff. I've seen it. Been, it's been done, but super, super hard. Um, but what I'm trying to say is stick with the strategy that you like. Do not stray from it unless you severely, severely think that it is not for you. Um, and sure, you, this may take time to figure out. It took me a year to figure out what I really wanted to do. And here I am with one strategy that I'm really focusing on and sort of combining it with my personality. Um, should I buy a Lambo with my profits? Yes, this is a real question I got. Um, it is not a joke. And uh, this can be, you just replace Lambo with anything. And my question, my answer will always be to, uh, to this question is uh, no, unless for a very important, there's what, there's only one exception here. And that is if you sort of create a, a budget and rule for yourself. Um, the number one thing that you should be doing with profits is reinvesting. That is how the rich become richer. If you do, if you literally take your profits um, and spend it on a Lambo or a vacation, you know, that's up to you. Sure. However, your account will deplete very fast. Um, you know, again, this dates back to when I first started trading, I bought myself a monitor and that was a very dumb move because I took out money from my account 
made my account smaller and I will never get that money back besides in the form of this beautiful monitor that I have now that I use for trading. Um, so obviously you can take your money out and your profits out for necessities like um, uh, you know, your bills, whatever you got to do to sort of maintain a sustainable lifestyle. What I'm trying to say is, you know, if you make a hundred grand a day, let's say that just, you know, amazing, you hit the jackpot, you make a hundred grand a day. Do not go out and buy a Porsche, you know, cause that, if that's your entire account, that is the dumbest thing you could possibly do because the best strategy ever, in my opinion, is to reinvest that money and have your money work for you while you sleep. That is how every single successful trader um, become, becomes rich and wealthy and successful. I can promise you it is not because of their day trading careers. It is because they take those profits and reinvest it. Um, there's a great app called Titan on the App Store. I, you know, just dump a couple thousand or a hundred dollars, whatever you want, um, and they literally do the work for you. Um, I can, if you guys uh, want help with that or help setting that up, I'm more than happy to sort of direct that for you. Um, or you can make your own portfolio, you know, real estate. There's a whole lot of, uh, there's different avenues to reinvest your money. Long-term portfolios, obviously real estate's a big one for many stock investors. Um, there's, you know, whatever, you, you know, you name it. There are a ton of avenues to reinvest your money, but it should not be spent, you know, stupidly, I should say. Um, and it's super important to reinvest that money and make that money work for you. That is the easiest way to become wealthy. Um, uh, obviously, I'm not the world's richest man, but I'm saying that if you want to become a successful person or trader, that is one of the best ways to do it. Because for example, let's say you blow your $100 account. Uh, but you know, good thing I put in $1,000 into my long-term portfolio last, last year, and that already just wiped away my losses. So while I may have lost um, $100 today, um, my long-term portfolio it, you know, was green on the day, and it's doing great stuff. So it kind of bounces it out, and that is sort of how you can become a success, successful trader and investor. Um, so those are the kinds of questions that you should be asking myself. You know, what can I do to better myself? The, you know, what strategy is best for me? Um, what, not what is the best strategy? Because I can promise you that there is no best strategy. There's a strategy for everyone. Um, so you just have to ask, come to terms with yourself and ask yourself, what do I want out of this? And why did I begin this? Those are the kinds of things that you need to ask yourself, especially on a red day or when you get down on yourself. Easiest thing to do is just give up and say, well, you know, screw this. I'm done. Goodbye, but it's super important to you know ask yourself why did I begin this journey in the first place? Debunking myths. All right, this is a very common common theme here. A lot of people, you know, if you have a girlfriend, your boyfriend, you know, your partner, you name it, um, family, they're gonna ask you, oh, you know, you're a day trader. That's gambling. Well, here's what you got to tell them. All right, this is an easy um, <laughs> one line or you know kind of short little thing that you can tell them. Uh, well, no, it's just, it's, it's honestly just calculated investing. That's all it is. Um, it's gambling if you don't know what you're doing. And what I mean by that is if you YOLO, uh, YOLO the calls, if you don't understand the calls being made, um, if you YOLO anything, really, it's a gamble. And that's why they're called YOLOs. Um, it's gambling if you don't understand why you're getting into a position. That's gambling. So there are many, sure, it's, there are many ways to consider it gambling. However, um, it is a common knowledge where it is considered not gambling, if you know what you are doing, if you know the risk involved, obviously you can say, you know, maybe, oh, you know, you're describing the exact definition of gambling. But gambling is a game of chance. And sure, that's that's what it is with the market. But I can promise you, if you have, again, proper expectations and realities, you don't have to gamble your money away. You can have a proper risk management set up in place, whereas in, you know, blackjack or poker, you know, sure you can manage your bankroll, but at the end of the day, it just comes down to whatever hit, you know, whatever card hits the board. Um, whereas uh, your strategy provides you that edge that you need to make it so that it is not gambling. And what I mean, or sorry, to continue with that, setting proper expectations. You need to have a proper expectation. What I mean by that is not, um, and I will touch on this again later, is not to focus on the profit, but focus on the process. And because the profit will come, um, which brings me to my next point, you need a uh, you need a lot of money to make a lot of money? Uh, no, that is very, very wrong. Um, a lot of people I've seen have said, oh my goodness, I need 100 grand to make 100 grand. I can promise you that is false. Um, there are many success stories out there who, you know, self-taught traders, um, a lot of traders in this group that have made a lot of money or quite a bit of money for themselves um, by simply, you know, using a couple hundred dollars. They turned a thousand dollars into a you know, couple thousand dollars, you name it. It can be done um, as long as you have risk management um, in place. Trading journals, it is a must. 
Um, it is, you know, I can't stress this enough. It transforms your trading. I know at first, oh my goodness, it's tedious, it's dumb, and I hate it. But it is super important uh, to utilize. I can't stress this enough. This is, if you learn anything from today, please make it this that you need a trading journal, um, even if it is just to track your PL um, on the year. It is so important. I cannot stress this enough. Um, I literally, you know, on a, for example, these, this past week or the, this past month, really, February is notorious for knowing, um, what kind of, or February is notorious for being a very, very, very tough month, um, for traders across the world. And this is a great month for me to review my trading journal and, you know, remind myself that I do have the skills and the confidence, um, to be, to be a successful trader. So a lot of traders out there think, oh, trading journals are a waste of time. You know, if you think that, well... I'm sorry, you're probably missing out on a ton of money and it is it is almost like a cheat code. You can literally further your trading um, immensely and you can speed up your process like no tomorrow. Uh, trading journals are a must. I'm more than happy to provide you with a free trading journal if needed. Um, I will make one for the group if that is the case, but if you don't already have one, um, but please, please, please um, make sure to grab a trading journal or make one for yourself. Super easy. Basically, just track... Um, you know, even if it's just a one line, what can I do better next time? Is it, did I uh, put in too much money? And again, this relates back to expectations and reality. If you are shooting for $1,000 a day, well, on a $100 account, well, that's just not realistic. It's not, you know, false expectations. You know, what the heck's going on there? So I would write on my trading journal, I went in with too heavy size. I had an unrealistic target. Um, and boom, you know, next time tomorrow, I will put in let's say $100 shooting for $50. So I'm making, let's say, 50% on the contract. And that is a, you know, a, more realistic, um, a more realistic goal. And that is sort of the magic of the trading journal. You, it helps realize what you can do better next time. So I can promise you it is super important to have. Mindset. Uh, the mindset is everything. I can't stress this enough. Again, um, I had a trader friend today tell me that they blew their account. Um, and I, I told them the exact, it came down to one word. It came down to one word besides mindset. And this is emotion. Um, emotions are your own worst enemy. If, if we were built like robots without emotions, I can promise you it would be 10,000 times easier to become a profitable trader. We are so bent, you know, on wanting a thousand dollars a day or getting the next car, you know, whatever you name it. Money is a very psychological, it's a, you know, it's a man-made concept and it's a psychological terror. It is all about um, sort of battling with those emotions, how to control them, and I will do a lecture in the future on emotions and psychology because it is honestly quite possibly more important than the trading itself. Uh, even though, because you know, you can have an awesome strategy, but if you don't, if you don't have uh, the emotions and the psychology behind it, you will most likely fail. Which is exactly what happened. He's a great trader. Um, he had a great strategy going for him, and he still does, obviously. But uh, he let emotions get the best of him, and he revenge traded and lost everything, blew his account. And it, you know, for example, if we didn't have emotions, we'd say, ah, oh well, you know, I lost X amount of money. I'll come back tomorrow stronger. And that's where you have to get yourself. And that's, you know, something if we didn't have emotions. But you know, that's not the reality of things. The reality is that we have emotions. Um, it is just learning how to control them, which will be a topic of discussion in the future. Um, just not for today's lecture. Um, so patience is number one. It is the number one thing that I cannot stress enough. Um, patience, patience, patience. It's everything. I can't, when I first started trading, I thought I was going to be a millionaire within the first month. I'd, you know, do everything. I'd support my family. You know, you name it. I thought I was going to be amazing. But that is not the reality of trading. The reality of trading is it will take a certain, you know, it's going to be a different timeline for everyone. Um, it's going to take, you know, some people, it takes them, you know, six months. Some, ta some traders, it takes them, a year, two years, three years, five years, you know, you name it. There are people still out there still trying to figure it out from 10 years ago. Um, but, um, you know, there is no rush. The market will always be here. It's not going anywhere. Um, so there's always tomorrow. I'll, you know, remember that there's always tomorrow. Um, so next one, um, how do I set proper goals? Focus on the process, not the profit. What I mean by this is really, you know, when at first, when you're first starting out, I know it can be really, really hard to sort of get caught in seeing your P&L for the day. You know, if you're down 100 bucks on the day, you 
close the day hundred dollars down it is so easy to just say oh my goodness this sucks um, I am definitely going to quit trading like you know it's so easy but if you remember that some of the best trades that I've taken or that you have taken have been losers um, I, it's crazy how many trades I see that it's ridiculous these entries on some of these names only for them to work out and it is super frustrating to see that because you know for example if you enter Tesla at a thousand dollars and it's super super overextended um, I mean I don't know Tesla's just a beast so it's not really a good example but you know pick a name you know let's say stock XYZ is trading at a thousand dollars and you say oh my goodness it's gonna go a thousand dollars higher let me just dump a thousand dollars um, and I look at the chart and I see the chart is, you know, five ginormous green candles in a row. I'm going to tell you that that chart is overextended, not the best day to enter, you know, wait for a pullback and then enter. But, you know, sometimes those work out and it's easy to get caught up in the P&L where you see yourself up $1,000 on the day. Um, I would rather see 10 good trades and 10 losers than 10 uh, green trades and, you know, 10 terrible entries or terrible trades. Um, because I can promise you, promise you, promise you in the long run, it will hurt you. I will go back to my example um, I, that I mentioned at the beginning of uh, the lecture where I put in, you know, one to $2,000 in this random name. It was like one of the first trades ever. I hit big. I made a couple, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars And, uh, well, I lost it all and more the next the next week. So, and, you know, I may look at my P&L and say, oh, my goodness, this is phenomenal. I am the best trader in the world you know call me god whatever you want to say but that's not the case because it was a terrible trade i didn't have a plan you know i was my first trade so obviously i had no idea what i was doing what i was going on what these candles meant what these colors meant you know you name it i had no idea and i had no plan of stopping out and quite frankly i could have lost all two thousand dollars if it weren't for just luck um so that is why is it so important to have a plan uh this is where expectations and reality also come into play if you have a plan, if you have an agenda, for example, I set a goal of three years to become profitable. Um, and that would be a, a very good, very, very good, realistic goal. Um, it is an expectation you can achieve. Saying something like, I will become profitable and become a millionaire in a month, obviously is not realistic. So again, remind yourself that patience is number one. You have to have proper goals. Focus on the process, not profit. Um, and have a plan. Again, you need to have a plan on every single trade you take. It is super important. I cannot stress this enough. Um, when people come to me and say, oh my goodness, should I exit? It is that it is one of the worst questions I, I get. Obviously, you can ask me that, but I will tell you, you need to have a plan. Um, it is so important to say, um, you know, I, I will, I'm going to ask you, where is your exit? What's your, you know, your target? You know, you name it. It is so important because I promise you it will save you hundreds of hundreds of dollars in the long run. Do not just rely on the moderators here to, to you know, hold your hand and, um, you know, piggyback your way through it. Because if that was truly the case, well, you know, this is probably not the group for you because then you should probably be in a Discord where they just give out alerts and sort of forget about their members. But here we don't really want to do that. We um, want to help you grow as a trader and uh, learn. Because in the end, you know, it's you're going to develop your own style of trading. Um, we are not always going to be there to hold your hand and tell you, you know, enter here, exit there. Um, because, you know, God forbid something happens to our Wi-Fi and we can't tell you when to get out. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so that's why it's super important to have a plan yourself. Develop it based on your own personality and say, okay, if Apple's at $100, I'm entering at $100. My long-term goal is $120 and my stop loss is five, uh, $95. So what that means is if Apple ta if Apple hits $120, I'm going to sell my shares of Apple. If Apple hits $95, I'm going to sell my shares at a loss. But that is called risk management. And um, again, I'll touch on that on a later date. But that it all ties back into expectations and reality because you will not have, you know, your expectations will be hurt and punished if you don't have proper risk management uh, patience or any of the points that I mentioned before um, and the reality is that it will take a while it's this isn't something that's going to happen overnight but if you put the time and effort into it I promise you I promise you um, you will uh, sort of succeed as a trader and I'm just going to finish up with a little quick story here um, I know this trader who 
um, was a college student and he blew two accounts um, as a college student and totaled up to $14,000. Some of you that may not be a lot, some of you that may be a lot. Um, and, you know, I think of that as a lot of money, um, especially when you're first starting out as a trader. Um, so he lost $14,000. And, you know, if that was me, I would have been so defeated. And losing $14,000 as a college student is not something, you know, to put on your resume by any means. Um, and you easily could have uh, sort of said, all right, uh, I'm piecing out of here. Trading is not for me. I'm down 14K. Goodbye. But this trader did not. Um, and what he did was, well, now he had no money, right? He put all of his money into um, trading and he lost that all. But he didn't stop there. He actually, um, his junior year summer, so the summer after his junior year, he worked two jobs. He worked odd jobs, you know, you name it, to fund another account of $5,000. Um, and he's, you know, he's down, let's say, 20K in the, in the hole right now because of uh, money he spent on courses and um, blowing up multiple accounts. I mean, you name it. Uh, broker fees, I, there's, you know, so he was down quite a bit, amount, uh, quite a bit. But he said, you know what, I'm not, I'm not giving up. I'm going to uh, set a, a sort of a realistic goal for me. And his goal was, you know, just to dig himself out of the hole. But he was going to do it with 5K. Um, and sure enough, he, he did it. And then, you know, based on his journey... Once he started journaling, he was able to track his process. And from that, he uh, was able to turn 5K into six figures every single month. And part of that is because he reinvested in, in all that. But, you know, and that was only two years ago. So just imagine that this, this you know, this kid, it was like two, three years ago, um, this kid was blue, you know, 20K in the hole. And he worked his butt off to sort of fund another account. He did, and he really took the time in, to study and learn from his mistakes, and he turned 5K into his, you know, throne that he's on right now, which is multi, a multi, you know, he's clearly a multimillionaire, obviously, if you're making six figures plus a month. Um, so I'm here to tell you that it is possible, but it will take time. So if you just trust, obviously, you know, it's so cliche, but trust the process that it will get you there, you will get there. I can promise you that. Um, and then with that, uh, Q&A time, so I'll leave a little bit of time. I'll stick around for a little bit. I hope you guys enjoyed that um, lecture. Um, I know it was nice and quick, nice and easy. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. Um, feel free to ask any questions you have. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I will stick around for, um, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes um, and anything. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to this uh, lecture. I will be here answering any questions that you need. All right, thanks, guys. Ah, thanks, Tim. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's me hopping on the mic. You believe that? <laughs> What's that? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I should I'm, I should add that. Yeah, no, it's it's crazy. Like, my, like even like you know your family members be like, oh my god, you're a day trader. Like you're the that's so stupid. Like, you know, options trading options. Oh, you're in penny stocks. That's the dumbest thing. You know, I hear it nonstop. And yeah, there are complete boneheads out there <laughs> who just blow accounts. And honestly, you know you're going to have more fun at a casino than staring at charts all day. But yeah, no, it's, uh, you're only going to lose all your money if you're really, really stupid about it. So that's why, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, there's, there's, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I mean, you <laughs> Hey, man, if it's working out for you, I can't really comment on that just because Tesla, one of those wild card stocks where they come, you know, every century, you know, for whatever reason, Tesla was the century idea because electric vehicles, in my opinion, will be the future of sort of this industry. So you kind of got lucky as long as you had a nice average. Um, Yeah, yep. So, I mean, definitely pay yourself on the way up. 
<laughs> um, yeah, but I, you know, if I, if you were telling me, all right, I'm gonna dump ninety percent of my portfolio right now into Tesla, I'd be like, ooh, slow your horses there. You know, we might we might have to have a one on one talk in my office here, but <laughs> um, but yeah, <laughs> exactly. But no, I mean, I'm sure that you know you probably have a decent average and uh, never let that go red on you. Otherwise, it's probably time to take some out. Definitely don't take everything out, but uh, definitely consider taking some out if you're up nicely in profit, for sure. Um, yep. Yeah, so I mean, like you're saying, like if it goes back down to 580? Um... You see, that's the thing, like, for example, let me see what Tesla's at right now. I didn't, I haven't traded Tesla in quite a bit. Um, let me just check Tesla real quick, just so, can, just so I can help back this up. Okay, Tesla is trading at, so Tesla's at 653 right now. Um, huh, yeah, I mean, that's tough because, you know, typically you want to say that you want to take profit. Um, have you taken profit yet at all? No, okay. And pretty much you want to ask yourself, what's sort of your timeline and your, what, what's your, like, what do you want out of Tesla? Do you want Tesla to become like a $2,000 share again? You know, that kind of thing? Or are you kind of just like in it for the ride? Well, I mean, I had it for like, for like three months and then it was straight green. Uh-huh. She got neutral. And then, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I was just kind of, uh, I just kind of saw it as a long-term hold and I was going to hang on that. I was going to pull out probably like, Yeah, so no, that's a great example. Um, so I'm just gonna tell you a little story, and maybe it'll help you. So when I for I put uh, you know I put money away in this long term portfolio, and we went through this massive you know we obviously went through this massive crash last year, and you know easily easily you know a ton of people I, you know my family my family members sold a ton of shares, and I was saying no 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 don't do that. <laughs> this is the perfect time to buy and you know now look where we are we're all, all time high and we're still in a pandemic it's crazy so obviously with tesla it's a tad different but what i'm trying to say is that if tesla comes that back down to 580 um you know that and that's why it's so important you know blues preaches this achievement tree, uh, preaches this in the chat you know averaging down um because tesla is one of those names that you give it time this thing will get back up to a thousand you know i have i have no problem saying that um, just because it is, you know, it's it's the golden stock. Obviously, everyone's after that. Retail investors will never die from that. <laughs> they will say Tesla's the greatest car on earth and dump, you know, a lot of money into it, which is great for the people who are already in. So, to answer your question, you know, the idea here is um, really your your goal here in in terms of Tesla. If you are gonna hold Tesla for ten years, you know, ten years plus, you know, whatever that may be. Then you have, you know, just leave it. Don't touch it. If you need the capital and you need to free up capital to trade other things, yeah, I mean, I don't think it'd be a bad idea at all to sort of take profit while you have it. You know, worst case, you know, you know, God forbid we have another recession or crash again and Tesla comes back down to 500, 400, you know, you name it. Well, you can be a buyer down there because, you know, given its track record, it's going to put itself back up there. And I have no problem giving this, you know, a very good <laughs> buy rating and sort of long-term future hold. So I think you're in a very, very good spot. You just have to obviously ask yourself what you want out of it, for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'd be, I'd be a buyer. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, that's that's the thing, like, and gaps are only going to get filled if they're, you know, if institutions want them to get filled. That's why it's, they're very tricky sometimes, especially, but with Tesla, I mean, those things are going to get filled, like, no tomorrow, just because it's Tesla. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, if it comes back down to, yeah, like, 500 a share, I'm definitely, definitely going to pick up some, some chunk there, and, but I'm going to go in knowing that I'm going to be holding Tesla for a a lot you know for a long time i should say because the long-term portfolio that is why uh that's why you it's called a long-term portfolio <laughs> there's a difference between day trading swing trading and investing obviously um 
So that's why it's super important to know the difference. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. Yep. Professor Smile. I should say, yeah, I should make that my name. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> Oh yeah, I got you on those. Um, yeah, I'm still I'm still testing them out just because you can. I mean, I don't want to tell you to go Google on YouTube because again, it's really going to come down to personality wise. You're going to get these people out there who are going to tell you some wacky, wacky Finviz parameters. Um, but that's why I'm actually currently back testing those right now, just so I don't give out sort of some you know half-assed parameters where it's like, oh my goodness, this is amazing, and the next day it doesn't work. And then it's also going to be adjusting it to your personality. Again, trading is really an individual game in my eyes. Obviously, when you're surrounded by a community of traders, it's a lot easier to succeed, but it's really about finding yourself. So that's why Finviz is super, super nice when you kind of find yourself as a trader because you know exactly what you're looking for. Um, so what I can do is uh, I can, what I'm doing is sort of perfecting those parameters for my style and you're more than welcome to model it after my style and, and go from there um, and sort of just shape it uh, to that, if that makes sense. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So kind of just things that are, are just like in good buying tips. So you want like long-term or day trades or... So like a like a swing trade per week you're saying? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. No, I totally hear you. Yeah, so those are actually a lot more <laughs> a lot safer than day trading uh, Finviz parameters, but I have a, I actually have a couple of those um, that I'm running right now and just trying to figure out which produces the best results and the most accurate results for me. Um, and then once I have those um, sort of worked out, I'm de I can definitely send those uh, your way so that way you can use the uh, use those. Obviously, they're not all going to be 100% winners, but um, the majority of them, which is how I find my names, um, that's kind of how I find the names that I play. Um, and they usually pay out pretty nicely as long as you have, obviously, proper risk management with your, and I'm sure your code does that too. Oh, yeah. No, that's sweet. That, that's awesome. So yeah, I, I can definitely... Right, so you're looking for some more. Got you, okay. Yeah, no, I can definitely uh, I can definitely send you those uh, your way for sure. Um, once I just figure out the sort of the last sort of things that I'm liking, because they're, it's, I'm, I'm sort of playing around with the parameters right now. I'm debating uh, certain, uh, some of the technical features that I want on there and what I want it to tell me. But uh, once I figure those out and sort of work out the kinks, I'll definitely uh, send them your way once they're kind of perfected in that sense. Yeah, no worries, man. All right, any final questions before I wrap it up? All right. Yeah, no worries. All right, guys, I appreciate it. Thank you guys uh, for joining, and uh, we shall do another one in the future. All right, enjoy your night, guys.